Hi, my name is Brett Gardner, and I'm a sales engineer here at Smartsheet. I do a lot of the platform demonstrations and provide technical Q&A for business advisors around the organization. Today, we're going to discuss what Smartsheet is, as well as a couple of examples that properly illustrate best practices. Today, we find that businesses are struggling to execute work faster and effectively collaborate with internal teams and customers. That's because the majority of work today is unstructured and doesn't naturally fit into purpose-built software. So solutions are cobbled together with email and a jumble of applications. That makes real-time visibility and collaboration next to impossible, and certainly won't scale beyond an individual or two. This leads to executives feeling that they're flying blind with regards to running their businesses without the information they need to make decisions quickly. Smartsheet is a cloud-based work execution platform that addresses this problem and fundamentally changes the way teams, leaders, and businesses get work done. Our clients use Smartsheet for a wide range of initiatives, all the way from employee or customer onboarding, to marketing campaigns, to retailers opening new stores and locations. We find that most work has three essential components. You have to kick the work off, execute against that work, and finally, you have to have the ability to report off of that work. Smartsheet gives you a platform that will enable you to do all three in a single live platform. This is essential to the core benefits of using Smartsheet. With this platform at your disposal, you'll be able to make collaboration work and automate workflows, which will allow you to make better decisions faster and to deploy your solution with confidence. Now that we have a conceptual understanding of Smartsheet, Let's dive into a live demo to get more of a contextual understanding. So let's start by looking at a dashboard. Now this is a portfolio dashboard looking at a number of projects that I have running in Smartsheet at the given time. This is my single source of truth. This is my place where I can go and get all my updates that I need. Not only does the dashboard give me the ability to see into a global view of all projects or any portfolio, I also have the ability to interact with it. So while looking through this particular dashboard, I have the ability to see what projects are unhealthy in that portfolio. From this dashboard, I can go directly into one of my project sheets. Now, as you can see, this looks very much like a spreadsheet, and it is, and it's meant to be that way for the ease of use and that familiarity. You can take all of your knowledge and experience from your spreadsheets, and you can apply them directly to Smartsheet. Not only are we a spreadsheet, we also have a number of different views that you can pivot towards with regards to what you can do with your data. So the first view off of the spreadsheet is the Gantt view. Now this is gonna help with your project timelines and give you a different sort of look into what's happening with your project. If you're more timeline based, this is gonna be extremely valuable to some of your project metadata. If I make any changes from the Gantt chart itself, you can see that all views are intersynced with each other. So make a change in the Gantt view or the card view, and those changes are reflected in the underlying spreadsheet. The other view that we have at our disposal is the card view. Now this gives us more of an agile sense or an agile methodology to our projects. So in this case, I'm looking at projects assigned to a particular user, and simply by dragging one card to the other, I'm reassigning a task. And then the last view we have is the calendar view. So a favorite among marketing teams and also a different look at data. So what you're looking at is rows of information that are transposed into tasks on a calendar. One of the benefits of the calendar app is the ability to export that and consolidate that with your company calendars. So the ability to publish a calendar directly to Outlook will give us the ability to consolidate those calendars if I wanted to have all of my tasks on one location. So let's go back to the spreadsheet and take a look at how the data inside of our sheet talks to and reflects data on our dashboard. Now that share button that you see me click on was something that you're gonna see in every item in Smartsheet. Dashboards, reports, and sheets all have the ability to be shared out to anybody with an email address. So as you can see here, these are a list of my collaborators and there's different permissions levels for each collaborator, giving you the ability to have some governance in your sheet, editors, admins and viewers all have visibility or all effectively execute work within your project. Close, be done. So now that we've seen, you know, a number of different views with this data, saw the ability to collaborate with that data, now we need to get insight into how we get visibility into multiple projects at once. 
at, we started with a portfolio level dashboard and we wanna see that reflected while we're executing our work. So now that I've been shared to the sheet through the use of our collaborative tool, I now can go into the sheet and make changes directly into the cells. I can go ahead and save my work and return to my dashboard and notice that all of my work has been reflected properly and my portfolio is now healthy. Earlier in this presentation, I talked about workflow automation. So from this dashboard, we can also see that we have a number of pending approvals. And I will go from this dashboard and navigate to that particular sheet. I now have a number of automations that help me regulate this task list. As you can see, I have one row that's highlighted. This is an example of conditional formatting. With conditional formatting, I have the ability to set up rules based off of criteria happening in my sheet. In this particular example, you are looking at when an end date is in the past, the entire row will light up in red. The other set of rules are functional rules. Now these are managed in the alerts and actions. These are based off of a particular set of conditions. As you can see a couple of them here, we're gonna walk through in a little bit. The update request when, when the status ball changes to red, that's gonna send an update request to my assignee. So in our particular example, We've notified with the conditional formatting what task is late, and we're gonna utilize the functional rules and update requests to get more insight into why that task is late. So with my rule, I will change that to red and trigger that task. After a little bit, you're gonna see a notification pop up in the notification center. Not only can you do uh, an update request in the notification center, you can also do it straight from your email or from your mobile device. When I click into this email, you can see that it is just a form full of the information that I had shared via update request. When I click on that form, I have the ability to make changes directly to that row. Now I'll go ahead and make a few changes and complete this task. Once I submit that update externally from Smartsheet, I can come back into that sheet and notice that my changes are happening in real time. That update request has come through, my process has been completed, and the next phase of my automation has been triggered. Upon the completion of a task, it needs to be approved by the manager. And that submitted that has just been approved is part of that automation as well. This time we're gonna execute that approval request in the notification center. Now here's that uh, example of the approval request coming through. And as you can see, it looks very similarly to the update request, but instead I can now approve or decline. As you can see upon approval, that new task has been approved and my new VP approval will be submitted after. This is a great way to streamline approval processes or multi-step approvals, especially with executives that need visibility. So now that we've seen the workflows or an example of some of the workflows that I can create, what about reporting? We talked about how we can make collaboration work. We talked about the visibility that I gain with the dashboards and having a global view into all projects or a portfolio. We talked about some of the executables that I can do in the sheet level and pivot in a number of different directions to get a more flexible view. But now we need to report off of this work. And the example that I'm gonna use is I wanna take a look at all of my tasks associated with this project sheet. So let's go ahead and create a report that's gonna look just at my tasks. So in order to create a report, we can simply hit the create button and click on the report. We're gonna call this my tasks. With the report, we have the ability to select one or every sheet or anywhere in between as our starting point. So let's go ahead and select the sheet that we wanna look at. Now that we have our sheet, back to my example, I wanna be able to look at my tasks. Now again, I wanna know what I'm assigned to, so I will click on the current user and run that report. Now that I exit out of the report builder, you can see that I have identified all of my tasks associated with that project sheet. I do need a little bit more data in, in order to get a little bit more of a reporting feature so I can go back to that report builder and add as many columns as I need.
Once I've selected the columns I need, I have all the information needed in order to complete my tasks. Reports are not read only. This gives me the ability to work straight from a report and have those changes reflected directly into the underlying sheets. For example, when we change some of our tasks and complete them, that change made in the report is going to be reflected in the underlying sheet. And perhaps maybe instead of looking at you know, just my tasks, I want to refine this even more. I want to look at tasks that are incomplete. So as we've taken a look at this tasks, I don't need to see my completed since they've already been worked on, but I need to refine the report even more. So let's add some filter criteria. More specifically, I want to enter an in information that is incomplete. So that filter criteria is all set. And when we run our report, I now have filtered my report to look at my tasks that are incomplete. This exercise that I showed you with creating reports is a great way to filter, aggregate, and summarize your data, giving you a much more advanced feature and a much more in-depth look at some of the data going on in your sheets. You can use reports as a conduit in between dashboards and sheets, as reports can be reflected very nicely onto dashboards, giving you an overall timeline feel. In conclusion, we've seen an example of a portfolio dashboard, related project sheets, automated workflows, and reports. We saw one example out of thousands of permutable examples that you can create with the foundational elements within Smartsheet. The sheets, the reports, and the dashboards. You can use these Smartsheet assets to create robust solutions such as PMO, client implementations, store openings, marketing campaigns, and even a lightweight CRM. The possibilities are endless. Thanks again for your time, and I hope you got as much of Smartsheet as possible out of this video.